Hi folks, uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these videos like on basic setup so I'm going to run through it again because the user interface in the virtual software has changed. Uh, two warnings. Warning one, only have one virtual device connected to your machine when you're doing firmware updates and working on profiles. Now once you get the basic setup done you can have as many as you want connected but for basic firmware flashing for safety reasons only have one connected. If you do have more than one connected, there is a possible chance you could break both devices. So you have been warned. Second warning is for some reason in the newer versions of software, which the Verpal has not done for a couple of years now, they've decided to change the VIDs and PIDs of the devices. Um, which means that Windows and a lot of software uses the VID and PID of a device to identify the device. And if you change that, it suddenly thinks you have a different joystick. Different joystick means a lot of rebinding, so that's a bit of a pain in the ass. So just be aware that you may have to do this unless you change the VID and PID back to what they were originally, which I'll show you later on. So let's get the ball rolling. Now today I'm using 2020 12 11 software, so it's 11th of December 2020, the year of COVID. I'll run it as administrator. Uh, note that this little toggle here switches between the different modes. And if you can't see your device listed, and this, this list is quite spartan, hit left control and F12 to bring up this menu here and untick this. Currently it's unticked for me and that will show all devices on your machine. And left control F12, switch it off again. So. The firmware on the device right now is 25th of March 2020 and the software and the firmware on the device are kind of matched so they both need to be the same version for proper communication to happen. So first thing, let's upgrade the firmware. So go down to the firmware tab, make sure it's pointing at the correct folder just to be sure to be sure and then click the auto start. and breathe. Okay, so we got through that one okay. Now there are some distinctions in how this newer version of software works than the older ones. And one of the first things is it actually remembers the original config you had before you um, started the firmware update process. Now if you have got a brand new stick and it's just, we're talking OOB, out of box experience, then you have to do this next part which I will show you. So your device is made up of two components. There's the base and the grip that goes on it. So normally, if it's out of box, you'll have to go and select this drop down, select the right base that you want. For me, in this case, I'm using a Mongoose CM2. And then I select the grip, which is also a CM2. It's a Mongoose TCM2. You can see this list quite long now. And I don't need to select anything else. I'm not going to select the left or right. Now, if you're one of the spacefaring folks and maybe you have two sticks, a left and right, this is the point where you pick whichever it is, either left or right variant, okay? For me, because I just have this, this one stick and it is a right-handed one, I'm not going to click this, okay? The next thing up is the uh, twist grip. Now, some of the... Um, some of the devices come in two variants. Some have a twist grip and some do not. And some have a twist grip you may actually physically want to lock. There's a little nut in the back of it you can screw in which physically stops the thing from twisting in your hand. Um, if you have one of the ones that has a twist grip and you don't want to use it, then tick this wee box here, okay? 
just um, that way there it'll like basically ignore the axis when it comes to the configuration so this is the profile now I'll just explain why you need a profile these devices are modular there's a base and then there's a grip so you can have multiple different combinations of things here I mean I could have a Warbird base or a CM2 base and I could have a multitude of different grips here. I know people give Verbal a bit of shit online about, oh, how do you have to do this profile thing? Well, it's because of the flexibility. You need to tell the device what it is. It needs to know, the, the base here needs to know what the hell's hooked in here and how to actually communicate with it. And what's, how many buttons or axes, wherever the hell it is, it needs to know how to actually handle the thing. So that's why this profile thing uh, is here. And like I said, the newer version of the software is clever. It could actually work out what my original setup was before it upgraded the firmware. So it actually preset this for me. If you're you're setting up a brand new system, it won't know how to do this. So that's why I'm showing you how to do the profile. Now I've set the profile up, the base, the grip, any other combinations down here of left or right, which I don't need right now. But like I say, if you're a space fern feller, and say for example you're setting up your your alpha. Then what you would do is you'd select, say for example, this is the right alpha, you tick that. Or if it was the left alpha, you tick that one there. And then you see a VPC device and that sets it back to the um, device and it'll show up in Windows Device Manager as a left or a right variant so you know which one's which. So that's how to do the basic setup. I'm just going to set this back to what it is, CM2, and then save it back to the device. And you can see yourself there, it has set up the ID. Okay, so that's the first part over with. Upgrading the firmware on the device and setting up the profile to tell, configure the device to tell it what it is. Next thing we need to do is we need to calibrate the axes. And calibration of the axes basically means that we're going to move every analog axis, that is uh, the X, the Y, which is, you know, in the main base itself, that's moving it left and right, forward, backward, do the diagonals. And also, for example, on this one, it'll be, I'll be gripping this gr the grip lever here. Now, if you have an alpha, you have to do all that, plus the wee mini stick that's on the alpha, that's an analog device, so you need to move it. You need to move it left, right, up, down, so as um, the software on the device now knows what the maximum and minimum ranges of movement are. Okay, so let's run through that now. We'll go to the Axis tab, go Calibrate Axes, and what I'm going to do is that is the X, so that's left and right, all the way at left, all the way right, back to the center. And then the Y axis, which is forward and backward, all the way forward, all the way back a few times. And then I'm going to do the diagonals. So that is top left, bottom right, top right, bottom left, right into the corners there. And then I'm going to do the grip lever. That's our little brake lever. Now, if I had an alpha or an, a stick that has another analog axes on it, like for example the mini stick, I'd now start moving it forward and backward through all the ranges, left, right, and then leave it in the center position. I've now taken my hand off the stick and the stick is stationary. And then I click save calibration to profile. Just takes a few seconds. Okay, so that's that done. So if I start moving the stick around, there we go. It's all good. Do the wee grip lever. And like I said, if I had an alpha, which I don't have unfortunately, because 
well, basically, I have to pay for all this equipment myself. Verbal doesn't give me any money for doing this, and it certainly doesn't give me any free equipment. Then um, I'd move the little joystick about just to make sure. Now, the little joystick will probably be down in these axes here, and by default, with no movement, it'll be 50% and 50%, because that is the center position for it, okay? So that's the calibration done. So let's do one wee final thing. And what we're going to do is going to export our current profile to file. Now this has changed in the newer versions, which is great. And the reason why it's great is because it exports in an XML format, which means that if you set up a device using the same device setup using newer firmware, then you can just import the profile from file from the previous version and no need to reconfigure your stuff. So that's a really nice feature. So I'm going to export. And I'm going to call this one, well, let's see, it's a CM2 base, CM2 grip, and it's basic set up dot XML. So what that basically means is that if I start playing around in the software here, trying to new and fancy things and I make a, a boo-boo, all I can do is go back to profile, import, Point that the original, uh, there she is there, the original basic file I've just uh, exported. I click open and then save VPC device. And that now re reverts the config on the device to where it was initially set up. So all the calibrations have been done and she's ready to go. So um, as I mentioned earlier on at the start of the video, there is some changes in what Verbal have decided to do this time round. I don't know the, the rationale, but they've changed the VID and PID of the device in newer firmwares. Um, this used to be 03EB and 2045. And now for whatever reason, they've decided to change that. So I'm just gonna show you how to change this if you ever need to do this. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because uh, Windows and a lot of games use these identifiers to s say which which joystick device is which. And for example, I fly DCS, uh, so DCS knows my bindings for about thirty different aircraft based on the original IDs. What's going to happen now is if I try to run DCS, it's going to go ah, you've a new joystick. I don't actually; it's the same bloody joystick, but the IDs change. So what I'm going to do is just change this back to the original value. Okay, now I'll just mention this wee bit delay thing here. Uh, what this basically means is that after power is applied to the device, it'll wait four seconds before it'll start responding in a USB bus to Windows. Um, now, if you have multiple devices, now some people have reported issues with some software e.g. Uh, Starship Citizen and stuff, swapping joysticks around and stuff if they're using left and right sticks. It's probably because both of these are at the same value. So if you're having issues, pick your left one, for example, set it to two seconds, save it back, and then select your right one, load, and then set it to four seconds, and then save it back. And that way there, your um, devices will wake up with a two second gap between them. So they should always appear to be the same devices all the time it shouldn't hopefully do that swap thing for you so i've just set this back to the original vid and pid and i'm going to save vpc device so there we have it that's it set up and ready to go i hope this helps